Hi, my name is John. I'm one of the Power Pro Techs from WFCO Electronics. Today we're demonstrating the removal and replacement of the lower section in, a, in another maker's converter. Actually, this is a power center. We were replacing this lower section with one of our WFCO high performance three stage converters. This is a WF8955 MBA. First of all, you want to know why we would be replacing a converter. First step is that you find out either the converter is either defective, obsolete, or you may want to go to a higher performance converter, such as our MBA. Now our first thing we have to think about when we're actually doing this procedure is safety. We have to make sure that wherever you're working, sometimes these units are located in areas that are pretty hard to access. Make sure that there is no sharp objects, protruding screws. I also recommend while doing this to actually have a pair of safety glasses. Next step we have is the tools that you're going to require in order to make this transition. First thing, I'm using a screw gun with a magnetic bit. I'm also using a number two square drive screwdriver. I have a long six inch Phillips bit, a 5 16 T-handle Allen wrench. The sockets that we will need will be a 5 16 a quarter inch, and also a Torx T20. Also, if you have available, an inch pound torque wrench would be very helpful. The first step we have in doing this procedure is removing the front faceplate, which is they call the door assembly. This takes a TX20 bit. Next step for safety purposes, what you need to do is make sure your shore power or any 110 power source is disconnected from the RV. Also, I would like to turn off the converter breaker and also the main breaker. This way you are guaranteed that there is no 110 coming into this unit before you start putting your hands inside. Before starting, also disconnect the battery negative cable to avoid the possibility of shorting out the power center. The next step we will do is take our 5 16 and remove the two screws exposing the breaker area. As you can see, we do have a breaker. The main line comes into the main breaker. This is the converter breaker right here. The next step we will do is actually take our number two square drive. Then we will remove the converter power wire from the breaker and remove the negative or actually neutral wire off of the bus bar. Okay, next step we're going to do is remove the DC wires off the fuse board. Uh, one word of warning, be extremely careful in this area. Uh, edges are extremely sharp. I have cut my hand several times, a finger, working on these units. Uh, they're very sharp edges, so just be very, very careful when you're doing that. First step we're going to do is remove the two screws. Next step, we'll take our nine, five thirty seconds Allen wrench and remove the negative wire from the negative lug and then remove the positive wire from the positive lug. For our scenario right here, I'm going to leave the board up on top. Next step, what you'll do is route the wires back down from behind the mounting bracket. Also, be very careful pulling wires and putting wires in here. Uh, the wires can get caught on the edge of the sharp metal and actually fray themselves right here and chafe. Our next step is to take our six inch Phillips bit and remove the two mounting screws at the very bottom of the MBA board. At this point we can actually take the whole unit and slide it out routing the wires through the holes in the cabinet. As you can see, the entire MBA unit is out of, out of the lower section. And at this point, what we could do is actually start doing the installation to it. What we will do is take our wires, pull them off to the side. Make sure that when you're inserting this that you do not pinch any wires behind the board or get them caught. 
what you want to do is keep them off to the side slide the new board in place take your mounting screws once you get the screw started it usually goes in pretty easy and you got them in place next thing you want to do is route the wires your DC wires up through the cabinet hole and bring them over the mounting plate slightly okay once you do that get your DC board fuse board like I said okay yours will probably be just laying down right in this area what you do is reattach and you put the positive to the VCC which is the red wire which goes to the VCC and the white wire goes to negative and what you want to do is tighten these up by just finger tight for now once you have the wires attached you would do is have to do is align up the holes for the mounting bracket then using the quarter inch bit you can snug that one down slightly lining up the other hole now that you have the, the DC board totally mounted what I would do is come back and retighten these wires they are snug these wires should be tightened on this unit to about 32 inch pounds we do use in our labs a inch pound torque wrench which you could actually set the proper torque not everybody has one but you have to remember that these wires need to be tight you do not want to leave any of these wires loose they become resistance and can develop heat using a torque wrench is a very good idea this is not a foot torque wrench this is an inch pound torque wrench if you do not have one just tighten them up using your t-handle as tight as you can get it right with my hand just about once they're in there and you feel secure they're nice and tight that portion is done the next portion we need to do now is to route our converter hot wire comes up and goes into the breaker and what we will do is tighten that up now breakers have different manufacturers have different torque settings for how tight they want the, the screw to be on the breaker the next step would be is I would take the neutral wire and attach that to the neutral bar you do not want to hook that up to the upper bar which is your ground bar which will actually tie neutral and ground together which you do not want next step is to put in and attach your ground lug some converters like this one never had a ground lug because the case is all steel and they ground it directly to the case now these screws in this area here should be torqued to approximately 20 inch pounds I have found tightening by hand really good usually produces at least that again if you have a torque wrench I recommend using it in order to tighten these screws once all that is done you can take your cover plate for your AC area and using your 5 16 bring the board down over your breakers and replace your cover plate make sure that the breakers are protruding properly at both ends top and bottom at this point you could actually reassemble your door assembly at that point what you can do is lower the board down plug your RV back into a 110 power source or apply some sort of generator power or whatever turn your main breakers on and check the functionality of the, of the converter everything should be working fine in order to make a determination which converter will fit into the lower section of your power center WFCO has come out with a reference cross reference sheet and in the sheet we list our power centers model numbers amperage outputs also the, the cutout dimensions the cutout dimensions is actually the hole size that the whole converter fits into the MBAs certain MBAs will replace the lower section of certain converters we also list deck mount converters which gives you the outside physical dimensions and same thing with the inverters and transfer switches on the back side is the most important thing WFCO has a co compiled a chart showing our converters and competitors converters 
What you can do is actually find up your maker's model number, check the chart, and amperage output, which is usually indicated on the front panel. Knowing this information, you can order the proper lower section for your converter. If you do not find a listing of your converter on this chart, please feel free to call us at 877-294-8997 and one of the Power Pro Techs will gladly help you and assist you in, in determining which converter will best fit your needs. The WF8955MBA converter is a high performance replacement for the lower section of many 55 amp power centers. Like all WIFCO converters, it is an advanced technology three-stage converter and is designed to install very easily in WIFCO and other power center brands. WIFCO converters run cooler than other converters because the fan is activated by the electric load, not by a heat sensor. Our fans come on at an earlier stage of operation and increase in speed as the load increases. Thank you for viewing this informational video from the WIFCO Power Pros. Please return to our website often as we will add more informative videos and other resources to better support our customers.